Okay, that's trippy because I'm looking off camera right now. I'm looking over there. You can't tell. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Elgato Face Cam Mark II. I did receive the sample directly from Elgato, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. We got some key tech specs on the side as well as the back. This is a full HD webcam at 60 FPS and it has HDR, raw video, 84 degree wide angle lens, 2.4 aperture with a 24 millimeter fixed focus. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature with safety information and a quick start guide. This walks us through our installation instructions on a couple of pages here. How to get everything set up, how to mount it, activating the privacy shutter, connecting it to your computer, how to clean it. Then we have our tech specs on the camera. Feel free to pause as needed. Clearly listed and labeled for you. And then all that information repeats again in multiple languages. Next, we have our USB type A to USB type C cable. It's clearly labeled for us too. It might be hard to pick up on the camera with the black, but it's 3.05 gigabits per second. Elgato's logo and branding on it. Really nice that there's no issue knowing what sort of cable this actually is with that clearly printed on it. Really a nice high quality touch there. And then lastly, we have the face cam itself. Elgato's logo and branding at the top, face cam branding on the side. Here's a look at the other side. Here's a look at the front with that privacy shutter and lens cover there. Here's a look at the bottom with our monitor mount. Here's a look at the back side with our venting and our USB type C connector. And this mount expands so we can open that up to put on the back of the monitor and then we can adjust the tilt of the camera right here also reveals a little handle here. So we have a tool free removal or installation of this, depending on if you want to use this mount or not. It was nice that it was already installed for us right out of the box. Now let's go ahead, let's get this set up. All right, we have a monitor here. Let's get the face cam installed. Just gently pop that open. We got that lip there. So have that seated flush on the monitor and then just press the back down. There we go. It's that simple. And then we can adjust the tilt right here. So depending on how far down you want the tilt to go, you got to make sure the camera can support its own weight. So obviously you can tilt it down that far, but you'd have to counterweight, tape it down or something like that. But we can go further back with a pretty substantial tilt to make any sort of fine tune adjustments. And depending on your monitor, you could adjust it further, right? Tilting the screen forward or back, adjusting the height up or down, all of that good stuff can be accomplished here. And then lastly, we just have to plug in our USB type C cable to the back and there we go. If you're wondering about cable length, this cable is at least six feet long. I don't think it's seven feet though. It's not that long. So six and a half, I'm not sure. It doesn't seem like it's an exact measurement, but at least six feet of usable cable with the USB type C to type A cable that's included. All right, so we have our camera plugged in and all set and ready to go. We've updated the firmware. We did have a firmware update. So at the time of this video, this is the latest and greatest firmware you can get. On the camera itself, we do have a blue indicator light on, which is great. We obviously have the shutter open as well. We're also using the Elgato. This is their camera hub software. That's what you're seeing on the screen right now, where we're gonna dive into more of this camera's features. So first things first, up at the top, we have our device information, current format here. So we have different previews for the format. So 1080p 60, 1080p 30 is what we're changing it to now. 720p 60, 720p 30, you get the idea. We can actually go down to 540p 60 if we wanted. Let's go back to 1080p 60. That footage looks so good. I can't believe how good that looks. So I'm looking at the footage myself on a large monitor there. It looks awesome for a webcam. Who would have thought? Also, we kind of have difficult lighting. Yes, we have a lot of recessed lights above us, but look at the colors behind us too. And it's doing a really good job processing everything. I'm not seeing any flickering, anything along those lines. I can't believe how good this lighting environment looks through a webcam, guys. This isn't a mirrorless camera or anything along those lines, like my over $1,000 camera we're filming on. This is a webcam. So don't forget that as we go through all the features that we get. This has some top-notch software to help us get through and really get the most 
out of this camera, but it's really plug and play. We haven't done anything yet besides update the firmware. So first up, we went through our device and the different format options we have. Next, we have our framing options. So we have different presets down here, A, B, C, or D. Hey, there I am, still in the frame. Love it, love it, love it. What's cool here is we can also turn on face tracking. So depending on where we are in frame still, it can track with us. So we can move maybe more to this side. Look at that, it can track with our face, with that framing. So here, let's bring it in. That'll help see it in better perspective. So if you zoom in more, you give it more feel to work with, it can track your face within that fixed box, which is really, really cool. You can toggle that on or off. Let's go back out to preset A right there. So that's our framing option. Next, we have our picture settings, contrast, saturation, and sharpness. So here's our contrast. Turn it up or down, somewhere in between. Then we have our saturation, same thing. We can really get that saturated. We can really pull that back. I kind of like that with the zero saturation. <clears> or <throat> somewhere in the middle. And then here's our sharpness, same thing. We can go all the way up super sharp or all the way back down or find a nice even middle. And then we can reset everything right there to default, which I think look great. Next, we have our exposure section here. So we can have that automatic or manual. I like to leave it automatic, but again, if you want to set this yourself, you can adjust the shutter speed here. Oh, that's trippy. All the way up, whoa. Or somewhere in between, right? Pick and choose what works for you. We'll move our hand quickly back and forth too, as we adjust the shutter speed. That's super bright, definitely overexposed there. Then we can adjust the ISO to really fine tune that if you want. So 100 all the way up to basically 29, 29. And our shutter speed can go all the way from one over 10 to one over, what is that, 100,000? Or how many, how many zeros is that? It's too far away. One over 10,000 maybe, yeah. One over 10,000, but anyways, you get the idea. And then we can always just reset everything right there. So feel free to take those results too, and then just fine tune them up or down if you like what the auto is or it's close enough and your environment's not gonna change, you can always do it that way. And then we have white balance moving further down. So auto white balance, just under 5,000 Kelvin. So we can turn that off automatic if we want, and we can make our own adjustments here if we want to really warm it up all the way to 7,500 Kelvins or all the way back down to, what is that, 2,800 Kelvins. Got that blue filter going. Or again, boom, reset, automatic, 5,000 Kelvins, which is the color temp of the lights that we have here in the studio. And then you'll see at the bottom, our last setting here is our noise reduction for our processing. So we can turn that off. We can do light, we can do medium, and we can do high. I'm not seeing much difference with our current lighting and situation. So just adjust that as needed. And then we have our anti-flicker, 50 or 60 hertz. I'm not seeing any flickering in the footage with either one. And then we can reset that right there as well. Moving right along towards the bottom, we have the option to take a snapshot. So hopefully that just captured a photo for us and then we have a folder to view them. We have a couple different options here. I like having the grid. So we can disable the preview as well too and turn the grid on or off, but up to you. You have all of those settings right there. And then up at the top, we have a couple more tabs to go through. The next one's gonna be the effects tab where we can adjust orientation. So we can mirror everything if you want. And then we can also flip. Hey, I'm upside down. So pretty sweet, right? So we could mirror and flip. That's a lot of fun. So you can adjust that. And then we have all these AI backgrounds. So this is pretty nifty. We can blur everything. That is really good. Guys, I can't believe that. Look at how quick it is too. I'm sure it'll be better or worse depending on your GPU. We're just using an RTX uh, 3060 in this computer. But look at that. We got everything blurred. We can adjust the strength of the blur. That's only 1%. We can go way up to 100% or somewhere in between. I think 1% looks really cool. Boom. It's pretty sweet. All right, then we have some fun effects from Elgato. 
Couple Elgato ones there. Look at that. Hey, I'm at the shared co-working space. If you wanna take your Zoom call. Hey, I'm at my office. Really cool, I love these designs. I wish I had those in real life. Like this one too looks so good. I need to build that out in my studio. Man, that's awesome. But look at that. You wanna take a call. I like that one too, it's just fun. So there's just a lot of different things. If you're streaming, you're conference calling, maybe you're filming some talking head or B-roll, you get the idea. Then we got the NVIDIA broadcast. Who doesn't love that one? Please, if you're not an NVIDIA employee, when do you use this one? Somebody enlighten me. All right, then we got a cool background here. This one kind of got that podcast vibe. I like it. And we got some more videos. So look at the stuff through the window. It's pretty nifty. So there's the bedroom. I like that one too. Here's the news. We got a nice office. Look at that view there. Pretty realistic though. I gotta say, those look really, really nice. I'm digging that. I'm digging those vibes there. So some great backgrounds if you want. And then we have an eye contact option here. Do you notice anything different in my eyes? I'm looking down or up or anything like that. Okay, that's trippy because I'm looking off camera right now. I'm looking over there. You can't tell. I'm not even looking. See, and then it changes. So I don't know. Shoot. That is nuts. I'm not moving my eyes right now. I'm still looking that way. So I don't know. That's a nifty one. Interesting though. I think it's got some work to do. Dude, that's so trippy because I can see it. I don't know, I wish you guys could see that, but I'm not looking at the camera right there. Oh, now it changed. But I can slowly do it. There, I'm not looking at the camera. You oh, and then it changes back. Anyways, that's wild. Now, I didn't want to leave you hanging without showing you some sample footage recorded through OBS, but keep in mind, it's currently being captured at 1080p, 60 FPS. What you're watching, though, is going to be 4K at 30 FPS. So we have it stretched to fit the screen in our OBS source window. So just keep that in mind with what you're seeing. But take a look at the sample footage right here. And then just for fun, I'll go ahead, we'll condense it down and record a couple more seconds. And now you're looking at the 1080p video, not stretched or anything to fit your screen. This is what you can expect from that video quality here coming from our face cam Mark II. And now just for fun, I wanted to show you a different lighting environment. This environment is super harsh. So I turned off all the studio lights. We have one TV behind me here, this computer monitor, and this computer illuminating the room right now. We have one more off to the side that you can't see, another PC. But that's it, guys. And look at the quality here. Look at the image quality. In a very dark and dimly lit environment, I can't believe how good it looks. It's not perfect by any means, but guys, this is a webcam. Now, let me share with you my final thoughts after using the Elgato Facecam Mark II. This is an awesome webcam. It's hard to even call it a webcam with how capable it is. I'm really pleased with the quality overall. What you see is what you get. It's very plug and play. You don't have to touch anything if you don't want to, but if you do and you want to tweak that stuff, you can get even better quality out of it. Just pair it with some really nice lights and you're off to the races. The build quality is top notch. Love the built-in privacy shutter. No cap or cover, anything to take off to lose. It's just built right in. And I like the blue indicator light too to let us know that the camera is on. So very, very thoughtful. And the image sensor is top notch. I can't stress that enough. 1080p, 60, even got that raw footage if you want from the webcam. It's really, really customizable and very well thought out. Now, I know I'm singing its praises. What would I want to see improved in the future? Well, I can't say things like 4K because they already got the Facecam Pro. So for this particular webcam, it would really just be continuing to refine the software, continuing to improve the image sensor. And for me, this is very unpopular and not going to be something that they're going to change because I understand Elgato's logic and reasoning. There's no built-in microphone. So that's not going to matter for content creators. 
and it's a great opportunity to upgrade your microphone if you're not in the Elgato ecosystem just to make everything one clean hub and source of control. But I'm coming at that from the perspective of helping out, let's say my parents. So I'm thinking about my dad specifically. Hey, I wanna help you upgrade your work from home setup. Use this webcam. But now he doesn't have a microphone and it's one more thing I gotta get him or help him to set up instead of just having it be all contained in one system. Now I know there's so many different options out there from earbuds they could be using, whatever it may be, I get it. So I understand why it's not there and it helps us save money as creators, right? You're not paying for a microphone that you don't need or will ever use. So I get that train of thought. But when I come at it from the perspective of trying to help my dad, or if you want to maybe upgrade coworker systems, things along those lines, there's one more piece to the puzzle that you'll have to consider. Not a big deal, not for everybody, but just something that in the future, it would be cool if there's maybe a way to do this with or without the microphone to have that added cost saving benefit and maybe form factor and design, but also still have that option. Now, again, I don't know on paper what that looks like either. If we're talking a couple of bucks or tens of dollars, whatever it may be. So I know at the end of the day, your best bets just to go grab your own microphone and enjoy some stellar image quality.